All right, welcome everybody to the first day of IS50B, Fall 2021. Uh, this will be a continuation of IS50A. Uh, we will do two big things um, this semester. First is what's called computational geometry, learning more about the math that goes into game engines and things like that, so you can have a better appreciation of them, understand how game engines work, understand how trace lines work, things like that. And then uh, we're also going to continue our exploration of Unreal Engine and uh, learn stuff that we didn't have a chance to get to in 50A because um, it, there's a lot of stuff. Um, game development's a huge. And most people focus in just one area, but you still need to be conversant in sort of every area. So you kind of know what's going on. Like even if you're not an artist, you still need to know uh, about the triangle budget, right? Like every, every scene inside of a 3D game has a certain number of triangles it renders to the screen. And uh, if you don't understand that like artists will use all of your triangle budget that they can to make their stuff look good, um, you know, as, as an engine person or a gameplay person, you have to um, you have to understand that and and also like um, like maybe maybe they add a maybe they add a monster that's a million triangles you know maybe you want to avoid as a gameplay person spawning a thousand of those monsters at once and shattering your frame rate so we are gonna we're gonna learn a little bit about uh, a lot of things in Unreal Engine and we're also going to um, uh, we're also gonna like I said learn uh, more about sort of the math and uh, mathematical theory that goes into games and 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 it has like practical applications as well like uh, last semester we used project I don't know if we did when uh, Stephanie you took 50a with me but we used a, a project node to take a 3d object in the world and figure out what spot in 2d like on our screen it was appearing on and then drew a health bar above it right pretty pretty common use right so you have a you have an object out there in the world somewhere you want to know, okay, what pixel on the screen does that monster correspond to? And then you can draw a little green rectangle above it that's its, its health. Okay. So, um, uh, I, I guess what I'd like to start with today is doing more animation stuff. And uh, I've been kind of playing with different ways of doing that. There's a lot of free assets out there to do animations. But I'm just going to start with like maybe a little bit of the theory behind how animations work. And then I'm going to show you guys how to get um, animations going inside of Unreal Engine. So, um, Bencourt, uh, Dolan, I know you're driving right now or something, so you don't have to respond, it's fine. Uh, or I'll, yeah, it's fine. But uh, uh, Aaron, you, you, uh, Bencourt, you guys still have Unreal Engine installed, right? Like, we don't need to walk you guys through the process of installing Unreal Engine. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Unreal Engine, and uh, I'm making a new project for this year called Fall 2021. And for this one, I'm using the third-person template just because it'll show off animations a little bit easier, especially on the, the main character because you can see the main, main character on it. I'm using ray tracing, and I'm not sure if that was a good good idea or not, but... Um, it looks it looks all right here, but in other areas, the, the ray tracing engine for Unreal Engine is not quite um, not quite complete. Um, it looks it looks all right here. So the third person uh, the third person template doesn't have any firing animations like the first person one does, but it's got a body on the person, so that's nice. The first person template, if you guys remember, is just a floating gun with a camera behind it. And so you can't actually animate the character at all because it's just a gun. So, well, I guess it does animate. When you fire it, there's like a, a manatee that plays that, or yeah, uh, basically a sequence of animations that moves the gun a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about animation today in Unreal Engine and how that works. So there is um, two different kinds of things you can put in the world. The first kind of thing, the thing that we've been using all along are, are things called static meshes. And so a static mesh uh, would be uh, something like this chair here. Um, it, it doesn't animate, right? Like, I mean, I, I guess you could like slide it around or something. But like the, the chair itself is just, oh, I have my camera speed turned way up. Um, let's turn that down a little bit. Four, there we go. 
So the uh, the chair is just a chair, okay? But a person, a person has arms, legs, torso, neck, head, all that kind of stuff. And all of those uh, bones can in independently sort of move, okay? So you like move your head without moving your arm. You can move your leg without moving your arm, you know, so on and so forth. So a chair though, like it's just a chair. It's just, it's a static mesh. It doesn't change, okay? So uh, we're gonna be learning about animating not the chair, but the skeleton meshes, which is what this is called, okay? So there is a folder inside of your starter content. If you make, uh, go ahead and, and when you get a chance, make a third person template map, and you will see that there is a mannequin folder. And this is something you don't have with the first person template because they don't have mannequins by default. And uh, that's kind of why I wanted to use this one because it comes with some animations, yay. And it comes with uh, uh, a couple different uh, couple different uh, mannequins as well. So if we put out this female mannequin here and see the female mannequin looks a little different from the male mannequin. Like that. Okay. And um, so it comes with a couple different uh, mannequins and it comes with a couple different animations and that's good enough to get going. But then uh, later uh, today, I'll, I'll show you uh, better better options as well. So if you double click on, uh, I don't know, uh, SK uh, mannequin female. What do you guys want to do, the male or female mannequin? Any, any preferences? Male, okay. So this is double click. And what you will see, let me minimize my face, is up in the upper right corner, there is actually different tabs. And this is actually um, really kind of the thesis for today. This is what you're learning today. This is what you're supposed to learn today. And the thesis is this. There are different ways of looking at like a, a person running. There is the animation itself. The animation itself would be like uh, this. There is how you draw the person running, which is this. And you can switch that to uh, a female, right? Uh, and so the only difference between the male and the female is how you draw it, okay? The animation is actually the same. So if we uh, come up here, we can switch it to female. The animation's the same. It's the same, it's the same asset. You don't need a separate animation to animate a female and a male, um, at least using these these mannequin models. And so the animation's the same, all that changes is the mesh. And then the mesh is tied to something called a skeleton. And a skeleton is um, basically just a list of all the different bones in your body, okay? And each of these bones can be sort of independently manipulated. So if I rotate the upper torso, I can have, uh, you can see, uh, I can rotate the upper torso, uh, up or down, or twist it side to side, things like that. All a skeleton is, a skeleton doesn't know anything about how to draw the skeleton. That's the mesh. The mesh tells you how to draw a skeleton. So a mesh and a skeleton get tied together with each other. The skeleton is a model. It's not a. It's not a model like, um, like a three D model or anything like that. No, this is a skeleton. All it is is a set of relationships. All a skeleton is is a set of relationships. That says like, the hip bone is connected to the leg bone. The leg bone is connected to the knee bone. The knee bone is connected to the shin bone. The shin bone is connected. If you guys know that um, song. Uh, yeah, it's inheritance, right? So the uh, the the root of the uh, skeleton is technically in the ground here. It's kind of weird, um, but then the pelvis is really where the human body begins, according to um, the skeleton here. And so, if you move the pelvis, watch what happens if you move the pelvis. The whole body comes along with it. You see that? So the pelvis is sort of the uh, the origin of the human body, so to speak. And then the spine is attached to the pelvis. And so if you move the spine, you see how the pelvis doesn't move and the lower body doesn't move, but everything attached to the spine moves with it. Okay. And then the mid spine is attached to the lower spine. Okay. 
And if I move the mid spine, the lower spine doesn't move, but everything attached to the lower spine does move, right? And so this is called a parent-child relationship. You've got this, uh, this setup here where uh, it's a hierarchy. So if I move my upper shoulder, my lower arm comes along for the ride. But if I move my lower arm, my shoulder doesn't move. Right, I guess it moves a little bit in real life. But And then if I, if I move my wrist, my, my upper arm and my shoulder don't move. But if I move my lower arm, you see my wrist moves, right? So it's, it's a parent-child relationship. Where the parent moves, the child moves the, with them. But where the chi child moves, the parent does not move, right? So I can move my head without moving my lower torso, okay? And so the pelvis is sort of the parent to all of the bones. You've got three different bones in the spine that allows you to do things like um, rotate just like the upper part of your of your back. Here we have a programmer uh, posture. <laughs> this is the posture in which programmers uh, are typing 24-7. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. Uh, posture's not quite bad enough. Let's rotate this for a little bit. There, and then of course their the pelvis will be tilted backwards there and hunched over like that there we go this is this is how this is how computer science people are 24 7. <laughs> this is the classic programmer posture right here stick them on a stick them on a chair and uh good to go there. that hunched over the neck supporting all the way to the head. Yeah, that that's uh that is that is how we type. <laughs> the posture of a shrimp. Have you ever seen a shrimp? <laughs> I have to screenshot this. There we go. Put this on the memes channel. There, it's up on the memes channel now. Ah, oh, thank you for boosting the server, Benning Hoven. All right, uh, shrimp posture for the win. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you guys understand? So, like, when I move the when I move torso two, uh, everything that's a child of it moves, but the the parent of it doesn't move. Do you, do you understand that? And so, a spine is really just show bones. Where is the bones? Character bones. Here. So this, that white part there is actually the, that's the skeleton. Okay. It has no idea how to draw itself, how to, um, um, how to animate anything like that. All it is, is a set of relationships. Okay. Of like, this is attached to this, this is attached to this, this is attached to this. You guys with me on this? So once you have like a certain rotation to the the arms or whatever, uh, it needs to be rendered, and it is rendered using the using the mesh. And so you can swap out the mesh um, to draw the same skeleton in different ways. And in fact, any um, it, it's fairly common for like almost any um, character in a video game to share the same the same skeleton. So uh, as long as everybody's human. You can actually just use use the same skeleton for everybody, and you just draw them differently. So some are going to be, you know, lighter skinned or darker skinned or taller or shorter. And as long as you don't distort the proportions too much, it'll kind of work out. Not not bad. Um, can you ragdoll it? Uh, there is ragdolls using the physics asset, which is the um, rightmost thing over here. So th that handles the ragdolling and, and there's constraints on like how far the joints can move and things like that. So the right, cause if you guys remember ragdolls, like back in the day, like the bones would go completely floppy and like somebody's arm would like go through their head and their leg would like rotate up 180 degrees and be scratching the back of their head and things like that. Uh, this is using the mannequin asset we downloaded. No, this is actually the mannequin that comes with 
um, this is the mannequin asset that comes with um, the third person template. So, um, should be pretty much the same though if you downloaded a mannequin. I don't know why they don't just have that as a separate download. Um, okay, so yeah, so you got these different levels of looking at um, skeletal meshes. A skeletal mesh says draw the bicep this way, draw the head this way, draw the torso this way, draw the thigh this way. And those can be swapped out. So you have a male skeleton, a female skeleton. It just changes the, the shape of the, of the different pieces of the, of the bones. Uh, so you have the skeleton, that's the relationship of all the bones. Then you've got the mesh, that is how you draw the bones. You've got the animation, which is how you uh, move the bones over time. And so an animation is just something along the lines of like, at this time, have the shoulder socket rotated 90 degrees or something like that. So here's the anal idle animation. So you can see uh, all these different bones are kind of moving around and rotating a little bit. And it plays on a loop over and over again. And there you've got an idle animation. And so um, I tried 3D modeling during the summer. Yeah. Um, and then you've got something called an animation blueprint. The animation blueprint uh, allows you to, um, uh, event graph, here we go. Uh, start the shop. Uh, it's, that's the blend space these variables for the blend space, which are then used over here, probably. Third person, idle, and run. Let's see, speed is set here, okay. Check it's valid, yeah, okay, good. So the, um, uh, and then the physics controls things like uh, what happens when you ragdoll and, and stuff like that. It's also, it also controls collision. It's like if you try shooting a person, um, you have to have the physics set up on them to uh, intersect with them. Um, okay, so, 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 where is our animation? Let's bring it back up. Okay, so, um, so you have the skeleton, you have the mesh, you have the animation, you have something called the animation blueprint that, um, uh, allows you to add code to an animation. In this case, what it's doing is that it's, it's getting the speed of the, uh, mannequin and setting a variable. And the variable that it's setting is called speed and that allows you to do things like this so this is something called a blend space and a blend space um a blend space allows you to smoothly interpolate between different animations so this is a one-dimensional 2d is it 2d this isn't 2d it's 1d why is it called 2d um this is a one-dimensional blend space the blueprint code of the actual C++ code. This is blueprints. So the blueprint code, uh, every frame, what it does is it gets the velocity. It gets the velocity of the uh, person moving around, takes the length of that vector, because uh, if you want to convert from vector uh, a, a velocity to speed, you take the length of the vector, right? And uh, that sets a variable. And so by using a blueprint, you can set different variables. Am I in the air? How fast am I moving? And those things can actually be used by the animations to blend between different animations. So this thing here is called a blend space. It's already set up for you. And this is the input, the speed here. And when the speed is zero, it plays the idle animation. When the speed is at 90, it plays the walk animation. And when the speed is at 375 or higher, it plays the running animation. But why is it called a blend space? It's called a blend space because it actually smoothly blends between those different animations. At, let's say the person just starts slowly, slowly, slowly walking forward, like you're barely pressing forward on the uh, uh, your thumbstick or something like that. And you see the person is mostly doing the idle animation, but there's a little bit of stepping there going on with their feet. And as you start walking faster and faster, it transitions more and more from the idle animation to the walking animation. And then when you start running, it starts transitioning more and more into the running animation. So you can smoothly move from standing to walking to running. And this is different from how it used to be. Back in the day, we would have one animation for 
idle, one animation for walking, one animation for running, and we would just switch between the two. So the person would be standing still, then all of a sudden they would be in full motion. And it would look kind of cheesy. It wasn't really the end of the world, but it, it does look fairly unprofessional. And you can also add in uh, what are called 2D blend spaces, where you can also add in things like the angle that you're moving. So the person can have a separate animation for running backwards, a separate animation for strafing left, strafing right, right, things like that. And so a 2D blend space could take in speed and angle. Like the, and then your blueprint would update the angle you're moving versus the angle you're looking at. And then you can do things like twist and things like that. Individual mannequins for each frame. Uh, in, in the old days, yeah, it would actually be a separate static mesh. You probably do something like that today. Um, make static mesh, yeah. So you can actually save this as a single static mesh that doesn't animate. It's just a, like a chair. It, there's no bones, no nothing. And you can actually just... Um, you can actually just... Um, uh, export a bunch of different frames of the animation and play them one at a time if you wanted to. But this, this approach is much better because it allows you to blend together different animations and it looks quite nice. It looks quite nice. So, um, there's different animations for jumping, starting a jump, ending a jump while you're in the air. So, these are the animations that come with it. All right. So, i close out of these. And you'll see that when you play the game, uh, this is all implemented. Like, if I walk very slowly, um, it sort of smoothly starts animating. It doesn't have any strafing animation built in. So it just sort of looks in the direction that it's moving. And when I stop, it kind of smoothly goes back into the idle animation. Okay. So... Um, pretty cool. And, it's, and this is all done for you. Now, let's talk about getting some better um, some better art assets. So there's a lot of different ways you can get better art assets. Um, like I said, I've been kind of going through different options and trying to see kind of like which ones I like, which ones have these blend spaces made for you, um, animation blueprints made for you so you don't have to do too much work on them. Um... So I'm going to show you a website right now called Mixamo, which uh, various people have recommended. It's got one problem, which is that the um, the models look at 90 degrees to the, re the direction they're supposed to be looking, but you can fix that by just rotating them 90 degrees real fast. Mixamo. So this is actually a Adobe product, um, and you can pick a character. They've got mm, one, two, three, four, five. about 45 uh, characters times three. It's about 150 different characters you can pick from. So you can have an archer character, um, SWAT team guy, there's a fat Elvis character. And so you can kind of find a, find a character you like. Um, I don't know if anyone has any uh, particular preferences on which don't show the warning, I don't care. Um, there's a ninja. Ada, come here, girl. I'll let you pick. So we're gonna we're gonna pick a character to add to our game. There's an archer here. It's not the same one we looked at down before. Oh, it's this one has a bow and arrow. Okay. There you go. I got another I got a female ninja here. It's like Snake eyes or something. It looks like a person who works at NASA. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe it's not a ninja. Maybe it's a clean room. Olivia. Clean room, clean room person. SWAT guy. This guy's Wait. weird. This one, doozy. Yeah. Do you guys have any uh, preferences on uh, which one to this import into the world? Cute. Pumpkin Hulk. What? It's the Pumpkin Hulk. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Drake. First, I was like this, and I was like this. Wait, different Drake. Mm -hmm. Huh? 
Drake's a musician. Mm. Cloaked figure. Uh, this is a cloaked figure. I don't know. It's kind of weird looking. Uh, no. No. Knight D. Pellegrini. Uh, eh. No. <laughs> what do you think? El Chupacabra. It's amazing. I tried to get our school's mascot to be the Chupacabras. Did you know that, Ada? Yeah. yeah. It's like it's too violent. Too violent, yeah. We do not support sucking the blood of goats at our college. Instead, we picked a bull that would probably crush the Chupacabra to death. Do the construction worker. Okay, sure. No. You don't like the construction worker? I mean, the construction worker is pretty fine. I'm probably going to put the character to do some construction. <laughs> If we import him. Pirate? That's no. not a, how is that a pirate? That's not a pirate. Futuristic pirate. Uh, this is a well-proportioned model. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> it's not the same character again? It's has only like three times now. I, no, that one has face paint. Yeah, that's a good one. No. Yeah, there we go. No. Okay. No. So, no. Uh, my daughter, my daughter <laughs> loves clowns. No. Uh, Ada, 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 stop, 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 stop. Okay. So, so given a character, you can add an animation to it. So, for example, if you want a clown to do capoeira, you click on the character, you click on the animation, and then you've got a capoeira doing. It's the it's the breakdancing martial art, Ada. You remember how I told you I went to a capoeira class at UCSD, mm -hmm. and nobody else showed up? Not even the teacher. Not even the teacher? Yeah. So that made me the best capoeira person at that class. How come? Because nobody else is there. I was the best one. <laughs> Zombie idol. It's not bad. It's not bad. Not even the teacher. Yeah, the teacher didn't even bother showing up. So I was like, well... I am the capoeira master now. So you can, basically what I'm trying to show you guys, is you can pick a character, you pick an animation, and just kind of, you know. Why do you, why do you like this character? It's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Obviously. You, if you want to have a belly dancing clown, you can you can totally do that. I'm probably gonna cause uh, Dolan to get into a car accident. Uh. <laughs> it's so horrible. Okay, thriller makes sense. Thriller makes sense. Okay. So Thriller is... You, you know Michael Jackson, Ada? Yep. Okay. Uh, so it's the dance from Thriller. You saw Thriller, right? No. Yeah. Not very much. Okay. Really. Okay, so how do we download... How do we get this into our... How do we do, How do we get this into Unreal Engine? Uh, which one do you want? Ada? Which one do you want? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay, we'll do that one. Okay, so... <laughs> So first up, um, uh, when you when you add a thing like that, it appears over here. Just cancel out of that, and you'll get a T posing. Daddy, he can do the macarena. The macarena, yeah. Dead. <laughs> no, bro. Uh, okay, so when you have the guy just in a T pose like this, what you do is you click on download. You see if it is an FBX file, T pose. Just leave it as the defaults here. Download, and then uh, it will download an FBX file, and then. Um, Save that. Daddy, Save. he can do the chicken dance. Huh? He can do the chicken dance. I know he can, girl. I can. So just save that to a folder. I made a Mixmo folder. And uh, just save it. Save it to that folder. And then when you want, which which uh, dance do you want? Either the Macarena or the, ch or the chicken dance. Okay. Now here's the thing. Like, the, the, the animations are actually savable separate from the from the actual model so when you have, when you have nothing when you have 
when you have nothing selected, that's actually saving the skeletal mesh. And then you can save the animations um, separate from the, the skeletal mesh. So you're actually saving the animations. And so you need to do that. If you want to save the animation separately, what you do is you save, save it without skin. So that is the export format, 30 frames a second. Um, it's fine. So you save it without skin and all that does is it saves the motion of the bones. And so you hit save on that and what's that chicken dance, save file. I'm probably, to... gonna, I'm probably gonna turn on physics on him. Turn on physics? On him. Okay, and you save it to that directory. Okay, so uh, you might've seen in that directory, I've already saved a couple of them just to get ready for today. So what you can do is come in here and uh, and uh, I've already imported a lot of this stuff. Let me just take it from the top. So I'm going to call this uh, delete me because I've already done it once. I'm just going to come into the delete me folder and I'm going to snap this to the right hand side and open up the folder that I saved everything to. So over here in the directory that I just downloaded, the scary clown and all that stuff, uh, the um, the guy, the skeletal mesh is saved here. Okay. And so you just drag it into your content browser and it will pull up the FBX import tool, which looks like this. Okay. And um, uh, if you already have a skeleton that matches it, uh, which I, which I do, you uh, pick the skeleton that matches it and that allows the skeletons to share animations. Um, maybe I should have done this from scratch. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. The first time you import, it's going to have no matching skeletons, but just do that one and, uh, hit import. Okay. Are you going to see some clowns do the chicken dance? It'll give you a warning. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So now the clown is in the world. And if we put it into the world, um, you'll see it's just key posing because it does not have... It does not have a um, animation. animation. Okay, yes, and so it, it imports the uh, it imports the skeletal mesh, it imports the normal map, the uh, materials, the alpha map, and the diffuse map. Diffuse is used for color. Normal map is used for bump mapping, um, so on and so forth. So, um, specular highlights, all that kind of stuff is all imported automatically. And now uh, Ada wanted to do the it imports all assets related to the mesh. No, it, that was only a single thing. So I dragged just this one file in. I dragged that in and that file actually has all of this stuff in it. That's why that file is like uh, eight megs. Okay. So um, that just that one file by itself is eight megabytes. Now I'm gonna drag in the chicken dance. So I'm gonna drag the chicken dance into here. And again, that pulls up my FBX import thing here. I'm gonna attach the skeleton to the same skeleton. Uh, mine's called pa Paladin's, Paladin Skeleton, but if all you did was pull in the, the clown, it would say Clown Skeleton. And then I just hit import, okay. When you press play, is it gonna do the chicken dance? Yeah, just hang on. So I am importing the chicken dance animation right now. This is why I imported everything beforehand, by the way. Importing all that stuff took, took a long time. Um, and there we go. So we now have the chicken dance. And if I double click on that, you will see that uh, the animation is attached to the mesh for Scary Clown, which is attached to the skeleton that is used by both the Scary Clown and that Paladin character that I have. He looks like a zombie because it, look at his feet. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. Yeah. And so here we have the chicken dance. He's even more creepy. He's even more creepy than last time. No, no, no. The bones outlines like his hand, like he's a skeleton. Oh, with the bones shown. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah. There you go. It's a little bit grainy because this is using the ray trace engine, which isn't doesn't look quite as good as the non ray trace, but whatever. So there we go. We got a scary clown, and we're just previewing all this. We haven't done anything quite yet, but um, what we can do is. Um, Close all this stuff out. We're just looking at it, and so we've got this clown that we've dragged into the world, 
and we just set its animation mode to be use animation asset and we're going to play the chicken dance and then when we play the game you'll see that the we've got a scary clown sitting there doing the chicken dance over and over again we can't walk into him because he's got a physics asset on that prevents us from walking through and there you go so can you turn on physics for him so we can shoot him he has physics turned on you can't you can't run into him wait where's the gun there's no gun this is a third person template we'll have to add in support for guns and i'm not sure if i want to keep this because the ray traced um renderer is not super great i might switch back to the normal you can see there's like glowing on this thing uh, there's a lot of artifacts from the from the RTX engine. Um, if we did uh, if we did mm, make everything reflective, maybe uh, maybe we can see the benefit of it. Let's see, Chrome. So you make everything reflective. Hall of Mirrors style. Where, where is he? The clown? What happened to the clown? Over there. Oh. So you can see all the noise. I don't know if it's coming through on Discord. There's a lot of noise and um, flickering and things like that. That's the result of the denoiser. It's trying to filter out the noise and stuff like that. So it doesn't. It's not It's not super great. I, I'll, I'll probably delete this and... Uh, Go back to something else. Okay, so anyhow. Oh, you can jump so high. Yeah. So that is how you can pull in um, art and animations from Mixamo, which is, it's all right. It's not necessarily as high quality as some of the other assets there. Um, some of the Paragon assets are actually quite, quite nice. I'm gonna see if I don't have to use stairs. I don't really need to. There we go. Oh, I got two minutes left. I got finish. So, there you go. We got <laughs> we got a scary, we got a scary zombie, and we're actually rotating on top of them. That's funny. We got a scary zombie clown thing doing the chicken dance, and we can, uh, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, we can pull out another clown. And attach a. Uh... <laughs> yeah. You can have a lot of fun with this. Um, skeletal mesh. Uh, I can switch out the mesh. So it is a paladin. This is the other one that I that I've downloaded oh, yeah, for Mixamo. And the animation asset I will use that is I'll also do the chicken dance. There we go. So we've got the knight doing the chicken dance. Look at that neck. That's a little disturbing. Um, the knight's doing the chicken dance. The uh, zombies doing the chicken dance at the same same time. A chick who can do the best chicken dance. All right. Let me do the idle animation. There we go. So, a little idle animation there. Or, uh, hmm. Ninja idle. There we go. <laughs> That's how ninjas stand, apparently. Maybe you could put that <laughs> next in front of him, like. I'm like, I'm staring. I'm ready to attack the chicken dance. All right, you gotta go. Mr. Chicken Dance. There you go. So, let's rotate it. There we go. So he's not quite sure what to make of the, the zombie. All right, and the zombie will, the zombie will do belly dance. There we go. Okay, so we've got a belly dancing zombie, a hip hop zombie, and a chicken dance zombie. And uh, we have a knight doing the uh, ninja idle animation in front of it. So, What's the point here? Uh, as you guys can see, I can actually switch out any anything that uses the same skeleton 
I can switch, like, if you have two different skeletal meshes, this is a skeletal mesh here, anytime you have two different skeletal meshes that use the same skeleton, you can just swap one out for the other. So I can switch out the Paladin, and it's fine. I can switch out the, uh, I have two copies of the clan because I imported it twice. Um, I can switch out the, I don't think that would work, actually. Yeah, because these, these are actually different skeletons. So, uh, but these two guys both share the same, these guys both share the same um, skeleton, so you can attach the same animations to them. <laughs> Maybe you can make him walk into the wall. Can you okay. make him walk into the wall and like disappear and like reappear? Yeah, you could. Yeah, it's like making him walk into the wall. That's right. So, uh, do you guys understand the uh, snake? Do you guys understand the lesson for today? Is that uh, one skeleton can be shared amongst multiple skeletal meshes? That makes sense. So, um, the skeleton is sort of the controlling component. Animations attached to the skeleton, skeletal mesh is attached to the skeleton, the physics object attaches to the skeleton. And as long as everybody shares the same skeleton, then you can really just swap out um, knight for zombie. Male, female, male mannequin for female mannequin. Because uh, that is a different skeleton than these the Mixmo skeleton. All the Mixmo skeletons are the same. And the mannequins have their own the same. Now, if you want to share animations between the two, then what you need to do is do what's called a rig. And there's a retargeting process you can go through that I don't know if we have time to do right now. But um, mannequin animations. Mesh, SK mannequin, skeleton tree. So if you look at the skeleton tree here, Root, pelvis, spine one, spine two, spine three, clavicle left, and there's also clavicle right, obviously, and the neck. So the upper spine has three things coming off of it, left clavicle, right clavicle, and neck. Now if we go over to the um, skeleton for you, for the scary clown, you can see they're not called, uh, they're not called spine one, right? Like, uh, let's snap this over here. So this one is called root, pelvis, spine one, spine two, spine three. This one's called hips, spine, spine one, spine two. So they have different names. And also the root of the, uh, the root of the skeleton is at the hips, whereas on the uh, Unreal Engine mannequin, the root is actually on the ground and the pelvis is uh, a child of the root. And so their origin is actually in a different place. So you can't just use one animation for the other one because they have different names and their origins in a different place and all this kind of stuff. Okay, So there's something called a retarget manager and uh, you have to go through what's called the retargeting process. Uh, where are you? Uh, let's see here. Where is the retarget? Uh, you might have to. So, anyhow. So, select rig, select humanoid rig. And then what you do is you go through and you have to um, show how the, pe what we call the pelvis on the default Unreal mannequin is called the hips. And what we call spine one, uh, they call spine. And what we call spine two, they call spine one. What they call spine three, we call spine two. And you have to go through and left clavicle is called left shoulder. Upper arm left is called left arm. And so you have to go through and you have to manually uh, connect. Uh, this is called this, this is called this, this is called this. And once you've done that and you've gone through the retargeting process, then the two of them can share animations with each other as long as um, they're not too uh, far apart. Okay. You guys, you guys understand? We're not going to do that right now. We're, we're basically out of time. But... Um, um, it's kind of fun, right? Like you can you can just add you just add a uh, 
uh, you can just add, um, you know, you can just go into uh, Mixamo and uh, download new models and download new animations and just kind of mix and match them. Schematic and you okay, girl? Mm -hmm. Doing all right down there. Go. And then uh, once you've got your skeleton, your skeletal mesh, and your animations set up, then you can use um, blend spaces to dynamically pick between which uh, which animations are played, and you can have a blueprint manager uh, set the variables that are used by the blend spaces, and then you can have the physics handle things like ragdolling and collision and things like that. So, uh, any homework for tonight? Yes. I would like for you all to go on to Mixamo and make the most wrong combination of character and animation that you can find. Okay. So uh, I am not going to give you any ideas. I've given you my best shot here. A scary zombie clown doing the snake dance is my take on that. I'm sure you guys can do even worse. The paladin uh, bent over like a ninja is also fairly wrong in my in my look. Going to be hobbits dancing. That's fine. So, um, yeah, it's not going to be as fast as summer. It's 18 weeks, two two days a week. So uh, there's essentially 36 classes, whereas summer was 20 classes, right? So um, it's twice as slow, basically. 12 days of Burning Man. Yeah, so come up with the most wrong combination of character and animation from Mixamo, put them into Unreal Engine, just drag out, like, again, uh, you can just drag out a, um, a skeleton, then attach an animation to it, or if you just, uh, I think if you just drag out the animation, yeah, if you drag out the animation, it sets it for you. So you can just drag an animation out, and if it's the wrong, if it's the wrong, <laughs> it's so funny, uh, if it's the wrong character, then you can switch the characters. What do you got? Uh, idol, ninja idol. Uh, if it's the wrong character, then you can just switch out the um, the skeletal mesh, and you'll see it just works nicely. So you can have as many maximum assets as you want in there, and they all share the same skeleton. And as long as they share the same skeleton, you can just switch out the appearance, switch out the animations, and everything works really nice. So that is our lesson for today. Okay, you guys have any questions? Grading, grading is going to be daily work. Um, there's going to be some math. Um, there's going to be another mod project, and there's going to be another Unreal Engine project. And it should be fun. It should be a fun class. Will we be doing any programming science? Uh, yes, maybe. Dep it depends on you guys. So every time I teach 50B, it's different, and it, it also depends on what you, what you guys want to learn. So you have the ability to request anything, and if it's within my powers, I will make it available to you. Uh, are we going to do any group projects? Sure, if you want. Or you can do it individual. It's fine. This kind of stuff like this, just do it all individually. Uh, but uh, the... Um, the mods in the Quake project or the um, Unreal project, yeah, you can um, you can uh, certainly work in a group as well. And if you are one of the people who are at home who just watched this for the first time, uh, like I said, try to try to be here during class. I think it I think it's a lot better for students to be live than to just watch a recording. But if you can't make it, you can't make it. Okay. So um, attendance will be taken using uh, this. So make the wrongest combination of character and animation, put it into Unreal Engine, screenshot it, put it up into Canvas, and there you go. Um, all of your assignments will be on Canvas, of course, in the Modules section. So if you come up to IS50B, go to the Modules section, um, you will see your homework for each day there, and doing your homework counts as your attendance for the day. The daily, the daily work counts as your, your attendance. So make sure you do this one or you're going to get dropped. Right, you have to be there on the first day. Uh, you can you can build on what you did last semester. That's fine. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. And uh, welcome back, all of you. It's good to see you all again. 
and I am excited for the semester. And be sure to request things if there are things you want to learn. If you want to learn AI, request AI. If you want to learn how to do attenuation of sounds, request that. Um, we got 36 lectures, 35 remaining, so feel free. Okay. All right. So that is it. See you guys on Thursday.